Taurus soulmates and welcome to your horoscope for December of 2020 where this is our last monthly horoscope of the year. Can you believe it? Come what may, we have traveled hopefully a whole year together and if you're new here and you're just traveling with me for the first time, we're still all making it to the end of 2020 so welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a busy month. There are changes and movements happening this month that not only happen and put the energy into this month, they carry us through 2021. We've got two long-term slower moving planets changing sign coming into conjunction with each other we've got the last eclipse that's happening for the year so taurus this is a setup for you traveling into 2021 where it really it hits the fan and it starts to stick right now and when i see hits the van it's not even bad just the changes your ability to have success going forward the new ideas the way you've been reshaped by 2020 is so abundant as we are here in december so it's busy so Little housekeeping and then let's get to it. The eat and greets. The eat and greets are going. They are going strong. We've had people even write in and request to come over now. You guys, people want to come teach, so I hope that you want to learn. We've got Patricia Walsh coming this month. Um, Sally Jutarmi will be here. Ali Gully will be here. Uh, Kira Sutherland. Uh, Rose Marcus will be here as well. We've got Michael Bartlett coming. Peter Burns will be here talking about astrology and reading palms. We've got Dragonic Astrology coming with Victor Oliver. So it is a busy month. Linda Bird will be here. Check them all out. I'll be putting up a little calendar with the schedule because now we've got enough to fill an actual calendar with dates and times and everything. I'm thrilled to bring that to you. And remember, you can always watch the Eat and Greets absolutely ad-free on Patreon with me. Everything's in the description box down below, okay? All right, let's get in here, Taurus. I really hope that you're coming in to December just feeling good. I really do. I want to just put that in the atmosphere really fast because this is a, this is a month where the changes are on the table, okay? Right as we come into this month, um, on the 1st, we see Mercury entering into the energy of Sagittarius. Now, in your general astrology, Taurus, the 8th house has a lot of weight this month. So immediately, one of the things that came to me is we're going to have these experiences of death. And it doesn't mean that I am predicting death in your life or your family. It is the transformation, that very Plutonian energy. It is changing from one form into something else. Maybe even it's a psychological death. I'm experiencing that I don't need this anymore. I've de talks this and I'm turning into something else. But it is certainly this idea of something transitions in a way that we call in human form a death in some way. So that is very abundant this month. And this includes income or resource connections that you have with maybe a partner or a resource or something like that. It may be having some pretty serious changes that begin now and carry into 2021. As Mercury moves here on the first into the energy of Sagittarius, Mercury is relatively confident. You know, so is Sagittarius. Mercury is about our decision making, our communication. He's very business savvy. So truly, you know, if this is a time where you need to have some conversations in that eighth house of joint resources, intimacy, psychology, um, astrology, the things in the depths about your reproductive organs. Is it time to see the doctor around something like that? Whatever it is, Mercury is really here very confidently helping you have these conversations and make these decisions. Now, a few days later, we get to the 14th and we have our last eclipse of the year. It is a new moon solar eclipse happening at 23 degrees of Sagittarius. Now the new moon is still the new moon. We plant our seeds of intention to begin something. So in this eighth house area, whether it be sponsorships, collab, you're praying for something for your, um, for your spouse, you're praying for that loan for school, you're praying for that collaboration money to come through on a passive income stream you started, whatever it is in your eighth house space. This becomes an abundant energy loaded with Sagittarius who wants to stretch beyond the horizons, wants to seek truth, wants to teach, wants to share and bring a benefit to you. This new moon, you're going to plant these seeds of intention here to watch this blossom out over the next six months. Now, I do again believe that I can't tell if this is just your partner, but I see maybe somebody that is a resource in your life, they're having a shakeup and you maybe are even being very seriously guided to be in support of them in some way. It's a moon, so I, I tend to think parents or family, something like that, but you come into this, posi this position where <clears throat> the situation has phoenixed. 
right? It's, it's died off in this way and now you're gonna start to participate in another. So please keep me posted in the comment section down below. How exactly is that manifesting in your life? Because the energy is just there, but I'd love to hear about it in your life, okay? On the 15th, a little bit of a busy day. First of all, we've got Chiron coming out of retrograde, so coming direct in the energy of Aries. Chiron went retrograde in July. Now, Chiron is our wounded healer, but also our greatest teacher. I mean, this is the wound. This is the soul wound. You know this. You know this in a way that you don't know anything else. And because you've hurt this way, you have that wisdom to bring life to somebody else so that they know they're not alone, so that they don't have to suffer, right? You can literally avert death. For somebody a spiritual death a psychological death a mental shutdown for someone else by sharing yourself and that hurt with them right but Chiron also pokes the wound it pokes the wound and as it's been retrograde in the energy of areas this has been the wound of the identity for you it's been in the 12th house space one of the things I think of is just in Aries in general Taurus is this idea of because it's the identity you know, what What from that very quiet 12th house space for you, where you ground down and you are creative and you sit in the hands of the universe, safe and protected no matter what, and it's able to work out, you are perfect as you are. What are your core foundational principles that you're living by that define your identity as a spiritual teacher, as, as, a, as a person in recovery, as a person who deals in music and art, or things that walk between the 12th house world in places where maybe you've been hidden or the, your identity has felt hidden. Where has Chiron come around, pushed on those buttons since July, and now you're ready to come out, stand shoulders high, and start living and acting as that new identity or that refined identity that also breathes life to other people so that you both or all can heal? What is that? What does that look like for you? On the um, 15th as well, now we've got Venus coming into the energy of Sagittarius. So the 8th house is loaded. It is very busy. Venus here is, this is love and money and harmony. And she's a magnetizer. She's trying to bring things to this area like, hey, come on in over here. You've been waiting for that collaboration. You know, you've been waiting for the inheritance to come your way. Maybe your spouse or your partner or somebody has a benefit coming to them with Venus in this particular area. I do think that Venus in Sagittarius is really good for bringing opportunities or benefit that come from foreign places. Whether this is a foreign idea, a foreign person, or... Just if, well, you know what? On the 13th of this month, Mercury, who acts as your financial planet in the general, is going to move into the position of being out of bounds. So this could even be that you're looking outside of your normal realm for financial benefit, financial gain, value gain, uh, conversations and things like that. So this Venus could also be magnetizing that thing in that feels foreign, but it's just because it's outside of your normal zone. But I really love that Sagittarius is confidently trying to take this area to new horizons. So if you do need to have that complication about complication, if you got complications and need to have a conversation about intimacy in your life, this is a really delicious energy to be able to do that. It's also a great energy since it's in fire to do a little bit of movement, whatever that looks like for you, okay? On the 17th, we see Saturn entering into the energy of Aquarius. Saturn has been rocking and working this ninth house of, of faith, of expansion, of teaching, of learning, of getting you outside of your normal horizon, broadening your horizon for the last two years. Now, this is a major slow moving time keeping planet moving into a new sign. But I want you to think back, Taurus, to March. What happened? What changed for you between March and July? Besides a pandemic, don't say pandemic down there. <laughs> but what happened for you? What did you become alive and awake to? Is your internet security solid, right? Yes, this is your 10th house, but this is the energy of Aquarius. Are your passwords protected? Have you... Um, taking a look at your technological goodies and all of that good kind of stuff. What happened for you in your career, Taurus? Did you take a step up? Did you start to crystallize some area of your career and become kind of that expert or that professional level? As Saturn comes here into the energy of Aquarius for the next couple of years, today is where it starts. 
Today is really where you lean in. You're going to do the work. You're going to crystallize this area of your life. If things are in the way and do not help you achieve, Saturn is coming to take this area to the next level. It's coming to have you meet your doubts and your fears about how you can succeed, what you can be in the world, including if you want to be married, right? Who we know you as in the world is what's happening up there in the 10th house, not just career. So Saturn is coming to present these things and then to raise you through them you're gonna face and crystallize those fears and turn them into gold like you just will whatever it looks like for you so not the most comfortable energy all the time because it is Saturn you do have to do work you have to do work and work hard when Saturn comes into the 10th house but also if you've been doing the work Saturn is coming with your gifts Saturn is coming to say yep yeah, you did the good work You've been putting in the work. Let me deliver the rewards because he's not just this terrible taskmaster. He's just a teacher. Okay. Now, as we get to the 19th, so we've got the 17th and we've got the 19th, Jupiter's going to come into Aquarius. Now, Saturn and Jupiter are not where we want them for the conjunction yet. They're both coming into this area and this energy, but they're not exactly where we want them for the conjunction that we're going to see on the 21st. Okay. But Jupiter moves into the energy of Aquarius here on the 19th, and this is really the first time since 2009 that we're seeing this really big influence and Jupiter is again going to be traveling with Saturn pretty much all of 2021. He will take a dip into the energy of Pisces and then of course get into there as we get at the end of 2021 but Jupiter and Saturn here. Jupiter in your career house wants you to succeed. He wants to bring you gifts. He wants to bring you blessings. He wants to bring you expansion. The thing I will tell you with Jupiter here is that you must be mindful in the energy of Aquarius not to expand more quickly than you have the resources to keep up with. And that more so in anything, Taurus, I think is about energetic resources, right? Do you have the energy and the time to actually put into that project? You are still over here being shaken, not stirred by Uranian energy. So you are out of your comfort zone little bit more adjusted to it now than than you were at like the beginning of the year so your opportunities to really crystallize the career area of your life to find your path to improve and expand out here it is gorgeous it is gorgeous now jupiter is also the energy of the teacher so if you need teachers get in there get career help get help with that resume, get help building that online platform or knowing about hackers and whatever you don't know. Let this energy raise you. Work with it, not against it, okay? Now we get to the 20th. We've got Mercury entering into the energy of Capricorn. So things in the publishing, marketing, broadcasting, expanding education area could start to get busy. But Mercury here in Capricorn is very productive. It's very practical, right? So whatever you're having conversations about, maybe you're talking to authority figures or you're being the authority figure that's talking and teaching or publishing that book, or maybe you're traveling home. It's it's the end of the year to see family. But this conversation between authority figures or heavier energies um, is certainly productive. And the energy of, does this help me achieve? is what is on your table. Mercury is savvy for making decisions. Now remember, in the energy of Capricorn, because I do place this as a pretty heavy business energy as well, you are the CEO of your life, right? You don't have to have an at-home business. You don't have to be a millionaire, right? Use this Mercury energy to realize you are the CEO of your life. Are you making decisions that are proving productive to you? Are you inhaling content and having conversation that are feeding your soul and moving your life in the direction that you would like to experience. So even though I see it as a business energy, remember CEO of your life. Okay. CFO probably too, unless you got a sugar daddy, which that's, that's a whole nother thing. Okay. As we get to the 21st, we have a busy day. First of all, we've got the sun moving into the energy of Capricorn. So happy birthday, Capricorns. That's what's going on over there. But it also means that here we are going to welcome in the winter solstice. Our friends on the other side will do summer, but we are positioned for a season change. Over the next four weeks, we're going to get serious. We're going to get Capricorn. We're going to get practical. We're going to make practical decisions. We're going to have conversations with the government. We're going to look around our life and say, okay, what do I need to end? And what do I need to tidy up so that I can get ready for this next season? Do I need to get stuff ready for my taxes, right? Whatever it is, we're going to be very Capricornian for the next four weeks. So dig in and enjoy that because that is a rearranging 
your ninth house space and making sure it is practical and on board to achieve. Now, as well, we've got Saturn and Jupiter. Here we go. Ready in this conjunction. 20 years. 20 years. They come around. They come together and we literally shift our energy. This is in your career house. This is setting the stage for 2021 and going forward. You're going to refine this energy. This is power. This is fortune. This is my action, my energy, and my work, and my stability, and how I manage my resources meets my, my luck and my, generos my generosity and my optimism and my confidence. And they come together, and we move from this earth energy that is the industrial revolution and things in the material plane to now it is not only about what you have Taurus it's about what you know Aquarius of the mind what do you have to share what do you have to give what do you have to add to the world right and in your 10th house your career we get, we get to see you do this this is in public in some way, what are you adding to the world? What do we know you as? What do we know your reputation as? You know, were you single and now you're married and this is a way that you're going to add and be of service to the world because you're going to care and love and take care of another person? Like, what do we know you as? Are you becoming, or did you decide this year, Taurus? No, I, I need to step up into the public. I need to definitely be a part of a public office in my community. Did you decide I need to stop hiding and go ahead and turn on my camera and, and create a YouTube? What does this look like for you? But whatever it is, Power and achievement meet fortune, and it is in your hands and available. And I would also ask you, if you are over the age of, of 20, <laughs> look back 20 years ago as these two came together before, what was a similar theme of what was shifting for you in your energies, right? Just kind of think about that, and you can map that here, okay? All right. Now, as we're going to close out this month, my beautiful friends, we get to the 29th, 30th, just depending on where you're at, and we're going to have a full moon in the energy of Cancer um, at nine degrees. Now, this is going to light up for you your third house space, okay? The full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, and adjusted, and I have to tell you straight away, even as I'm saying it out of my mouth, because Cancer is the energy of the home, the foundation, making sure you're nourished, it is a cardinal energy as well, so this will be a cardinal moon. One of the things that comes to me is, of course, family, but... If you're in a contract or an arrangement or a conversation or a discussion, Taurus, and um, it doesn't um, it doesn't fit for you anymore, or you're ready to put it down, this full moon will bring it to a usually a pretty gentle end. Now, I will say that this moon has some nice contact with Uranian energy, so this could be equally surprising things that come to your third house. Maybe somebody offers you an opportunity to write or to speak or to teach or to study third house things. Something goes on with your siblings. I mean, we talked about maybe some family-related things, and this is also a moon at the beginning of the month, and maybe we're seeing it again here at the end of the month, and you're, you're taking on the role of a decision maker or or something in a contract or something like that but whatever it is this will create shift in this third house area of your life so make sure you check out where nine degrees of cancer is at in your chart and if you don't have a chart please click down below come and get one for me go look up one for free at astro.com whatever you need to do so you can know exactly how this is working for you in your chart Taurus it is a big time Oh man, it is a big time and this is our set up for 2021. So I really encourage you, look back between March and July, what was happening for you that gives you the preview of what you're going to really crystallize and bring to a more serious expert level that can be really successful, profitable, and fortunate for you, Taurus, as we travel through this next year. Oh my goodness. Thank you for your time and your attention this year. Thank you for giving me your time and your attention in this video. I look forward to being with you next year, weekly, monthly, yearly, in the eat and greets and everything else that we develop and find out we're going to do on this channel next year. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, my fellow Torrens, and I will see you in 2021. Bye, everyone.